KTV 12 News is proud to present the debate for the Mississippi Lieutenant Governor candidate Delbert Hoseman and Jay Hughes. Welcome to tonight's event. We are live from the WJTV 12 studio in Jackson, Mississippi. Good evening and welcome everyone. I'm Byron Brown, evening anchor for WJTV 12 News in Jackson. We are broadcasting live all across the state of Mississippi, and we want to welcome our viewers in Jackson, Hattiesburg, Tupelo, Meridian, and Mobile, Alabama, and Gulfport. You can follow along with tonight's debate on social media by using the hashtag on the bottom of your screen. It's MSLTGOV debate, and you can see all the background of the questions that we'll be asking by following that hashtag. We want to welcome our Lieutenant Governor candidates tonight, the Secretary of State Delbert Hoseman and State Representative Jay Hughes. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, Brian. Here are the rules for tonight's debate. You will have 90 seconds to answer main questions and 30 seconds for follow-up questions or rebuttal. There will be no opening statements. You will also have 30 seconds for closing statements at the end of the debate. And the order of tonight's debate was determined by a random card draw. Gentlemen, once again, we want to thank you for being here. We know that you're coming here from uh, different points of view and also from different parties. One is a Democrat, the other as a Republican. So our first question we want to ask you tonight is, why do you want to be Lieutenant Governor and why are you the most qualified? Mr. Holden, we start with you. You have 90 seconds. Thanks, Brian. It's good to be with you tonight. And I appreciate the opportunity to visit with all of the voters all over Mississippi. <clears throat> you know, Lynn and I talked about this when we came, when we got through with our 12 years as Secretary of State. We had done all the things that we, uh, that we promised the, the people that we would do. We, we, had, uh, we had brought the agency into the 21st century. Uh, we had passed voter ID. We had an autism bill. We had so many things that we had done, and I thought it was time for us to look at where we could best be serv of service to Mississippians. When I looked at it, the lieutenant governor's job is that position. It offers the opportunity for each of us, for us to go forward and set the tone for, for legislation, the budget, and set the priorities on our budget on what we'll fund in Mississippi. So I'm really excited about the possibilities going forward. We've, we've got issues in education, infrastructure, things we'll talk about tonight, I think. But as I go forward, I think we have a history and, a, and we've performed in our job and I think we'll perform in the future. And I'm looking forward to the opportunity to serve as Mississippians. Mr. Hughes, why do you want to be Lieutenant Governor? Why do you believe you're the most qualified? 90 seconds. Well, thank you very much, Byron. I appreciate it. I really appreciate you giving us the opportunity to let the people hear from us this time. What I would say is it's life experiences. You know, while others were born with a silver spoon in their mouth, I was born with a plastic spoon in mine. It doesn't make Mr. Hoseman right or wrong. We just have different experiences, and those are what I want to bring. I was born poor, worked my way up. I've done just about every job there is, from truck driver to oyster shucker. And the reality is, through hard work, opportunity, blessings, I've been able to go from signing the backs of paychecks to the fronts of paychecks. Then I wanted to continue to serve in a way that I felt we could do something better for education in Mississippi because I'm a lifetime public education student. Every day of my class uh, education was in a classroom. And so, you know, what, that's what motivated me to get to Jackson, was fighting for public education and, and working men and women. And I got down there and I realized that there was no transparency, that it had left the Capitol, it took common sense with it and and I'm transparent I'm real I'm authentic and I have a lifetime of experiences of running businesses of hard luck of calluses and I want to take that and join people together I believe in compromise humility and respect not my way or the highway and when I was down there I realized in Jackson that that's not how it's running so I want to do that I want to bring people together and work on policies instead of working on the best headline for the next day Mr. Charlesman, he says you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth, and he was, and he was not. Is that a big difference between well, you? Were you born with a silver spoon, 30 seconds? Was, I think if he was born with a plastic spoon in his mouth, that's probably difficult for his mother. You know, I imagine they had some problems with that. You know, when I, when I, I, I looked at our house when we first came to Mississippi, um, it's on a gravel road in South Vicksburg. And uh, from that, my wife and I came back from, uh, from our college education, and we had a TV, a couple of wedding gifts, and student loans. We started with nothing. Everything we've done has been because we worked hard. And that's the same thing that I think you've seen me uh, exhibit in the Secretary of State's office, the same thing you'll see me do in the Lieutenant Governor's office. All right, thank you, Mr. Hughes, for response to that. 30 I, seconds. I don't have, again, I, I respect that we have different backgrounds. I was, my dad worked in the oil field as a roughneck, mom was a truck driver. I grew up understanding that you couldn't go to the hospital when you broke your fingers, you just taped it with uh, duct tape and popsicle sticks. That's the life I'm talking about, about being a janitor in a mall, about doing work that everyone else does. So I understand where people are coming from. and. 
and I want to serve all people in all 82 counties, not just in four or five lucky ones. I believe that there are, uh, every community needs to be served and every child needs an education. All right. Well, the office of lieutenant governor in Mississippi holds considerable influence and considerable power. Committee assignments and committee chair appointments fall under the lieutenant governor. Mr. Hughes, which committee assignments do you believe are in most drastic need of change and why? 90 seconds. Well, thank you, Byron. I think that the one that's most in need of change is Education Committee. We need someone in the Education Committee that's a chairman and the members there that have actually experienced time in a public school classroom. I'd really like it to be someone who's been in a teaching situation or somehow related to one so they understand that teachers don't just work half a day, half a year. Their work just starts many times when other people go home. So I would like to see everybody on the Education Committee go and shadow a teacher from 7 in the morning till 7 at night and do that in an A district, in a C district, and a failing district. Because what we need to do is recognize what Governor Haley Barber said back in, in 2008 at the State of the State, the single greatest economic investment we can make is quality public education. It's an economic changer, it's an economic driver. So I would like to see an education committee start getting outside of the box, thinking on their own and trying something different because if you continue to do the same thing over and over, you know what happens with that. So that's where I would focus on first as far as the most important committee is educating that next generation. Mr. Hosman, what committee changes would you make? Well, we're, we're going to have a Republican majority in the Senate, so we have a lot of opportunities to name people to, to various committee appointments. I, I think we have a lot of talent there. So not only on education, we've got infrastructure, we've got a lot of things. So we'll be, we'll be going over the rules with our senators to see who has experience and who can best serve and who wants to be in that role. Uh, that's not going to be a part-time role. They're going to have to work all summer long when we, uh, when we do our legislation going into, this, going into the session. I want most of the bills written before then. The other thing is we're going to have transparency. Not only do I want to broadcast, webcast the, uh, the actual Senate hearings, I want to do all the committee hearings so people can see their government at work. They can see those committee members and not only who the chairman is, but all the members. Have them voice their opinions right there and everybody go home at night and talk about it at the kitchen table. That's the way we really have effective government is where we show the people what's going on and not any surprise coming out of a committee. So you'll see a lot of transparency when I'm the lieutenant governor. And speaking of transparency, Mr. Hughes, how would you make government more transparent? 30 seconds. Well, it's, it's an interesting question because I came up with that exact thing two years ago. And, and I'm afraid if, if he copies more of my policies, we're going to have to have a ballot that says J. Hughes versus J. Hughes. Uh, I said, I want to post transparency. I want to have hearings conducted. I've introduced bills saying that we need to broadcast what's going on in our hearings. We need everyone to know what bills are coming up in a committee hearing before the, the meeting happens, the day before. So it's none of this shock type deal where no one has time to read it. And that's how they sneak in things like driveways to highways and $2.5 million. All right. I think any response to what he's saying that that was his idea first? Uh, I don't know whether it's his idea. Uh, he, he didn't have any legislation passed the four years he was in the, in the House that he was a primary sponsor on. So I guess we can, we'll see. Uh, uh, I'm glad that he agrees with, with our idea tonight. I didn't know he had one before. All right. Well, during the Nostromo County Fair, you both spoke on the issue of the importance of teacher pay. As you know, Mississippi ranks at the bottom in their average teacher pay. A starting teacher salary makes less than 36000 here in Mississippi. In Louisiana, it's more than $40,000. Mr. Hosman, as Lieutenant Governor, how would you go about raising teacher pay and by how much? 90 seconds. Well, I, th I think we raise it every year. Uh, and I think what we've done in the past, it seems like we've balanced the budget off teachers and education. So it ends up being at the end of the year every year. I want to do it at the beginning of the year. Our teacher pay raises will start the, start the process. In addition to that, there are other things. There's, um, I want to do pre-K. We need to fund, there were 19 collaboratives funded last year for pre-K. I want to fund all 50 so we can start our students earlier so our teachers will have educated children when they're coming in, into, the, into the school system. So there are a lot of things there. The amount, it depends entirely on how much we've got to spend in Mississippi, but it'll be a meaningful raise every single year. Uh, and I'm not held up by the regional average. The way to do this is to make sure that no teacher makes a decision on whether to teach in Mississippi's public schools based on economics. 
So we, our starting salaries have to be equal to or greater than everybody else's. And as you know, that puts everybody else up when we start that process. We're about $3,000 short of Alabama now and close on some of the others. So our first goal will be to have our initial starting teachers at at least the average of the surrounding states. So they're making decisions to stay in Mississippi and teach here. And that will also increase all of the rest of the uh, teachers in Mississippi. They deserve not only compensation, Byron, they deserve respect. As I go around Mississippi and talk to these teachers everywhere, one of the first things they talk about is the fact that we want the respect. They deserve the respect. They know what, what's going on in that classroom. They're our most important product with our most important process, our children. Mr. Hoseman, how would you, I mean, Mr. Hughes, how would you about raising the teacher pay and by how much? Well, uh, you know, that's a great question about teacher pay, but it's not just teacher pay. It is also respect, but it's also all of our other state employees who haven't had a raise in 11 years. I think it's a, it's a bigger issue. I think that we, we've got to look at education as a whole, and we've got to get back to common sense instead of common core. We need less standardized testing. We need better pay for everyone that's in the school system, not just teachers. And, and we need to fund the classrooms instead of the cronies and the testing companies. And last but not least, and we need a new uh, state superintendent of education. Uh, Mr. Hosman, how would you uh, would you use public pr money uh, to pay for private school vouchers? Thirty seconds. No, I, we're, you know the voucher system. There's 91 percent of our kids are in public education. That's where I'm going to concentrate. Uh, I think there's a couple of thousand or so in vouchers uh, that may go to some charter schools, and there may be five or six of them. Maybe a couple of more may have already been approved for here recently. But that's not where the majority of my effort is going to be. You'll see the majority of my effort on, on public education in Mississippi. That's the way to go here. There are issues with special needs for special children, and I have a special, and I have very much concerns about that, and when we have time, I'll All discuss right. it. Thank you. Would you use public money for private vouchers? Absolutely not. It's public dollars, public schools, period. And that is a big difference between Mr. Hoseman and I, and he's taken donations from those that fund Empower Mississippi and from the private schools that get the vouchers. I believe we have to take care of our public schools with the public dollars, period. Mississippi is the only state in the country without an equal pay law. Three bills die this year in the state Senate. As Lieutenant Governor, you would have significant say over which bills make it to a vote. If elected, Mr. Hughes, how much importance would you place on passing an equal pay law in the 2020 session? 90 seconds. I would say it's my highest priority. Without a doubt, they need one more state. It's a shame that how many years have been, been through that. I've got a wife, a daughter, four sisters. Uh, there's just no excuse that we have not passed that and that it gets killed every year. In fact, I was a co-sponsor of one of those bills that got killed. So the fact that I didn't have legislation passed is also because of the games that have been played by the establishment. So we need to pass it. We need to pass it now. And uh, I would get it to the floor for a vote if that's the will of the, the people in the Senate, without a doubt. And I think the vote are there because we had them there when they were killed. Mr. Hosman, on equal pay, what would you do? Yes, I, I believe in equal pay. Uh, um, uh, my chief of staff's a female. Uh, I'm, my, uh, my associates are, that run our office, are, our, our leadership team is majority female. And I'll tell you what else we're going to do. We're, we're going to ask everyone except for education, corrections, and the judiciary and child protective services to, to reduce their budget by 1% next year. That 1% will fund a raise for all of Mississippi's hardworking employees. They work hard in Mississippi. They deserve a raise. Our corrections, our mental health workers are all undercompensated. We see time and time our driver's license, same thing. So what you'll see from us is a process where we go and ask all of our agencies, except the ones I listed, to take a 1% less money. I took less money than I, this year than I did when we had my budget less than it was when I started. And I turned back just as two weeks ago $1.5 million to the public funds. We can do this. We can run the government better. And I intend to right size Mississippi's government. Mississippi's minimum wage is $7.25 an hour when it was last raised in 2008. Mr. Hughes, is it time to raise the minimum wage or change the raise and by how much? Well, I, 30 I don't seconds. think. Thank you, Byron. As someone who is on minimum wage almost my entire life until I actually got out of law school and was able to go to work and, and even then working for less than minimum wage, it's very important. And in fact, we have far too many Mississippians right now who are working only at minimum wage and 30 hours a week. And so they're not getting benefits. It is time to raise the minimum wage. It does make a difference. And it's going to lift us out of last place or first place in poverty, which we have the highest poverty in the nation. We have the highest unemployment. Our un unemployment employment rate in every county okay. is higher than the national Thank you, Roger. Uh, Mr. Hosman, minimum wage, uh, the time the, to raise it, and by how much? Uh, so. the, the individual companies and the people you work for set the minimum wage. 
And I don't want to thwart somebody with a startup job like I did. I worked as a grocery store stocker for A&P, which is not even in existence anymore, for A&P when I started out. And it was $1.15 an hour. I remember it well. There's no need to set a minimum wage. Our workers need those startup jobs, and our, and our individual companies will provide that. What we need is a better educated workforce. They'll demand higher pay, and they'll deserve higher pay. Mississippi roads are pretty in pretty bad shape, costing drivers hundreds of dollars a year in repairs. Mr. Hosman, what is your plan to deal with the infrastructure needs of the state? 90 seconds. Well, our infrastructure needs are, are poor, and I'll tell you what, I've, I have looked at this and the legislature has, has failed to act on a number of these issues. So what I'm going to propose is a local option use tax. That means that every county will be able to determine whether or not they want to raise tax on gasoline, diesel, or gasoline, either one. I want to push our, our economy back to the, to the counties. Mississippi's running the counties, it's not running the capital. Why take money in here and charge 5, 10, or 20 percent overhead when the, when the real need is at the local level? There are 436 bridges out. Those bridges are in the counties. So what you'll see proposed to me is those, those counties can take this additional tax, two cents, four cents, six cents, six cents, and put it back into roads and bridges in their local county. That means counties that have their bridges up to date won't have to tax their people. We don't have to tax people we don't have to. Do, we don't want to when it's not their issue, when it's the county's issue. You'll see me uh, on, on many issues pushing our government back to the local area. That's where people know what really needs to get done. I want to empower my supervisors, my mayors, with the ability to raise this money that they need to operate their streets locally without having to shift it through Jackson. Not everything needs to come through the Capitol. And I don't think that that proposal will be, will be one of the first ones we do in the Capitol when we start. Uh, Mr. Hughes, how would you deal with infrastructure? Well, uh, very easy. Uh, I had a bill that was killed by his friends and leadership, and that is, it was the same deal that if Amazon can figure out how to get my dog's treats to my front door, then they sure ought to be able to figure out in the state where my front door is. The biggest revenue gain that we had in the state last year was sales tax on people's internet purchases. I introduced a bill that said send those sales tax, 18.5%, back to every county they come from and let the, the supervisors there deal with the bridges and infrastructure there. That's what needs to happen is we need to be giving it back instead of keeping it here in a general fund to cover the tax cuts that went to corporate welfare. So, Mr. Hosman, uh, the use of a gas tax, or used to be, are you opposed or support of, uh, across the board what gas we'll do, tax? What, what we'll do is let each county decide on which one needs a gas tax and whether they need any tax at all. Why raise everyone's taxes when it may be very specific to a county that they need that revenue? Those decisions need to be made at the county level. I want to repeat, Mississippi is run in the counties, not in the capital, not on High Street. Do you support a gas tax? I've said that I would support a gas tax, just like Mr. Hoseman has said before tonight. And the reality is it's going to have to be revenue neutral in terms of the impact. Because if you're talking about raising taxes county by county, come on, it, we know it's going to be the exact same counties that can't afford it, that are being underfunded in their schools right now and being taxed out. That's, that's the reality is. We need to take care of all 82 counties, not punish the poorest ones that don't have a tax base and don't have the ability to pay more. The money is coming in. It needs to get back there. 15 seconds, would you use rainy day fund money to, uh, to deal with infrastructure? No, rainy day fund money is for rainy days. And we, uh, we are blessed that the legislature has continued to fund our rainy day fund. It's getting very close to being funded right now. I would remind you that almost every county has a four lane. And so people drive from Alabama back to Louisiana back and forth. That's the way we collect these additional taxes and not necessarily on a county that may not have the uh, economics to, to pay for that. So I, I, uh, I, think, I think we have a plan that will work in the counties and be county specific. Would you use rainy day fund money to deal with infrastructure needs? Only in an emergency situation, which, we, which we're just about at. But, but I agree that with Mr. Hoseman, the rainy day fund is there for a reason, but we need to freeze where it is right now and start dealing with our crisis because if you are in a small county and the bridge is out and it's your parent or family member on the other side, an ambulance all of a sudden becomes a matter of life or death. So it doesn't matter to me how many people are in that county or how many people, it is one person in need across that bridge and I don't want to wait for the image on national news of a school bus to go down one of these broken bridges. All right, thank you very much. More than 35 states have expanded Medicaid to provide health care coverage to the working poor. Families USA estimates that in our state, 200,000 would become eligible for coverage. Yet Mississippians rejected federal funds made available through the Affordable Care Act. Mr. Hughes, should the state accept money available from the ACA? Yes, they should, period. Now, 
to explain it further, Mississippi Hospital Association has come out with a health care plan called Mississippi Cares. I believe in that. I support that. It's a you you pay to play. The hospitals are paying for it. It cre it'll bring in a billion dollars a year, a billion and create between 16 and 20,000 good paying jobs. Because in these communities, the jobs that are in these uh, community that are the health care related positions are some of the best paying jobs they have there. So yes, we need to do that because we shouldn't be having your uh, death sentence on someone that's got a treatable condition. And these are people that are paying their part. They're working people. So it's very important that we cover and make sure we cover because otherwise the community, the city, the state pays the difference for it. So we've got five counties right now that don't have an emergency room. That means a stroke is a death sentence. And I think that's wrong. My mom died in the back of an ambulance on the way to a hospital that was just three miles too far. That should never happen. And if this uh, Mississippi CARES goes in, we're going to see all counties get these jobs because that's what's important. They're going to have hospitals and health care. People will stay and they will come back from school. Mr. Hoseman, should the state take money from the ACA? Uh, well, the answer to that lies in the fact that we cover between 27 and uh, we only cover 27 percent of the federal poverty rate right now. I have been in discussions with Louisiana, who had to, who had problems and had to kick 30,000 people off once they started. Arkansas, whose whose process has gone forward with a with no hospital uh, and the hospitals. I want to applaud them for taking a step forward. As, as our, uh, with uh, Arkansas's plans on the things they did right and the things they did wrong. This is a $6 billion decision. And I, I am for looking at all the areas that we can to make sure that our people are covered by insurance and, are, and particularly those that, that are working. I would remind everybody that the things like a working requirement or community service are being litigated in Arkansas right now. So we're on hold for that. The fact that the whole Affordable Care Act has been declared unconstitutional in Texas and now is coming before the Fifth Circuit. What we need to do is spend this time where they're finding out whether the thing is even constitutional to look at every option. It's a six billion dollar decision. I don't need to make it laissez-faire. I want to make sure that we do it right the first time. We will look at, at, at expanding our health care to cover everybody and cut the cost down. No citizen will be further than 30 minutes away from an emergency room. And the other thing I want to tell you is you need to remember wellness begins when you wake up not when you're sick. And so we, you will see us emphasizing wellness at, at local hospitals like they do in Tallahatchie County in Charleston, who, in Charleston, Mississippi, which is a great example of how you combine the two, an emergency room, primary care, and a wellness center. All right, thank you. We're going to give more questions in, but we'll give you 45 seconds for these uh, last round of questions that we have. Okay. In the late August, Speaker of the House, Philip Gunn, said again that the Mississippi state, uh, state should change the state flag. Back in 2015, Gunn was the first Republican official to call for a change to the flag that bears the Confederate battle emblem. Mr. Hoseman, is it time to change the state flag? And if so, how would you, as a leader of the state Senate, handle the issue? 45 seconds. Yes, we have said before that if the state flag comes up in the Senate, we'll vote on it. Uh, it is not a priority for me to change the state flag. Uh, there are opportunities to do that through referendums, like they put medical marijuana on this year, by getting people's signatures to do that. Uh, I think I think when when Mississippians voted on this 2001, it may be time to look at it on a second time again. But Mississippians will answer ask when they want to change their state flag. I don't think really the legislature needs to be doing that. Mr. Hughes, it's the time to change the state flag. How would you handle the issue? How I would handle it is the reality is I know that people want to hear yes, it will be changed. The reality is I've served in the House and I've spoken with the Senate and and the bills are there every single year and they don't have the votes to bring them out. That is a major decision. It is one that one person should not make. I disagree with that and I believe that it will be made by the people. Right now you already see businesses uh, with, with Nissan even, our biggest uh, employer does not fly the state flag. Those are commercial decisions. It does have a very real economic impact but by the same token it's not up to me personally to make that change that's going to have to be by the people or it will not be accepted by the people we have so many bigger issues that we're dealing with with the highest poverty rate with the highest infant mortality rate falling behind in our schools we need to deal with those I first. think 
Mr. Herbert, does uh, the, the flag, does it hinder our ability to attract businesses? 15 seconds. You know, I have talked with our economic developers. Most of the time they're looking at the uh, an educated workforce. They're, they're looking at the cost of electricity. They're looking at the, uh, the availability. Most of the time people just want, when I've done studies for this for the Secretary of State's office, they just want educated workforce, hospitals, and others. Okay. The flag comes up never. Thank you, Mr. Herbert. And you say, does it, does it hinder our ability to attract businesses? Yes, it does. I've, I've spoken with many people at the Mississippi Development Authority, with uh, people in my Economic Development Foundation, and when they come in, that is an issue. It's not the issue, but it does come up. And, uh, and as my economic developer told me, he said, we can get past it kind of like talking and explaining a tattoo on your neck, but it does come up and they don't all know right. how many it doesn't. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much for your all of your uh, answering our questions tonight. That wraps up our debate questions tonight. Now we're going to get to our closing statements. You each will have 30 seconds, and we will begin with those with Mr. Hoseman, 30 seconds. Yeah, tonight, Brian, we've, we've been able, and I appreciate so much you inviting us. Tonight we've been able to discuss infrastructure needs and a plan to do that with, with at the local county level. We've talked about education and our plans to raise teacher salaries and K-12 and do our pre-K formulas. We've talked about uh, a way to give, t to give our people raises that work for state government. If you look at my record, every time I've promised you something from vo voter ID to autism, we have performed. If Mississippians will hire me on November 5th to be their lieutenant governor, I'll do all that we said we'd do tonight. All right, thank you, Mr. Hughes. 30 seconds. Thank you, Byron. Uh, I'm not in this for me. I'm in it for us. I've served my Lord, my country, my state, my family, and what I believe in is the American dream because I'm lucky enough to be living it. And I feel we have a duty to return that American dream and hope to our next generation. And I believe that happens with education. So what's important to me is make that dream a reality by being transparent, real, and authentic. And, uh, and so I humbly ask for their votes on November the 5th. And I thank you, God bless you, and God bless the great state of Mississippi. Uh, thank you, and thank you, Candace. We do appreciate you being here tonight and answering our questions tonight, and we look forward to seeing you on the campaign trail. That will do it for our debate tonight here at the WJTV 12 studio. Thank you very much, and we want to thank you at home for watching us tonight, and we want you to follow us on social media, and remember that our hashtag is MSLTGOV debate. The general election is on November 5th, and you can find more information about the election process on our website. It's WJTV.com. Don't forget to head out to the polls on election day and thank you again for joining us for the debate tonight and we're moving over to our website at wjtv.com for our post-debate digital show we'll see you there